Hey everyone, this is Nick from Whole Latte Love, and today I'll be showing you how to brew and steam on the ECM Mechanica 5 Slim. We'll also be taking a look at some accessories that can help you get the most out of your machine to make cafe quality drinks at home. So, let's get into it. So before we start brewing, with me here on the side of the machine, I actually have a nice array of accessories that are going to make it possible for us to start making some drinks. There are a few of these items that are somewhat optional, but everything that I talk about is going to be strongly recommended by me. But let's first start out with our tampers. So the tamper is actually a device that you use to compact your coffee into a puck inside of your portafilter. So we'll load this up with ground coffee and then the tamper simply presses that down. And there's actually quite a bit of variety when it comes to different styles of tampers that we sell. The one that comes with the Mechanica 5 Slim is not bad, actually. For a stock tamper, this is a pretty good option. You've got a decent handle and a nice flat base. And it's that base and it's fit inside the basket itself inside the portafilter that really helps you make sure that you have an even and level tamp. So your key objectives are going to be to have a good, solid surface here of coffee that's nice and polished that water can interact with. ECM sells just a traditional stainless steel flat tamper. I've got these two next to each other. You can see this one's got quite a bit more heft to it. You've got a larger base that's polished steel and a larger handle. I find that this fits my hand a little bit better. There's a nice curve for my thumb and you can go down and tamp just a little bit more easily. There's the ECM logo on it. So that's an upgrade that you could get over this base one if you wanted. But then probably even more impressive is ECM's uh, distributor and then their push tamp. So I'm trying to get my uh, <laughs> branding on screen for you here. But the idea is that basically this is a two piece set. There's a blade on the first that you go in with, you twist to polish, and it makes that surface much more level instead of brushing it say with your finger. And then you go right on in and you tamp down. And because this edge here comes in contact with the side of this basket, you can make sure that you don't tamp unevenly. So those are some tamping options. I'm going to be showing you the distributor and push tamper. The next accessory though that I think is just vital really to coffee preparation is going to be a scale. So this is an Akaya Lunar Espresso scale. Obviously a bit more on the pricey side, but you can certainly find things that are cheaper. I think uh, some of the Hario V60 scales, for instance, are around 50 to maybe $60, depending on the variety that you get. But they introduce a lot of functionality into your setup just in terms of saying, okay, this scale can weigh in grams and we're going to want to use that both for our dry coffee that we're grinding out of the grinder and for the liquid espresso that we're brewing. Because if you have a grinder, say like this one, the ECM S automatic, and there are many more like it that have timed grinding, what you can do is you can start to learn how the grinding time correlates to the amount of weight that's being dispensed from the grinder. And with your scale, you can precisely get that time dialed in so that you're getting a consistent amount of dried coffee into your portafilter after you're done grinding. And so that really just helps make sure that you're consistent because you're always using the same amount of ingredients. And then you'll find that it's very common to see recipes, as they're called, of shots, say for instance, that recommend a ratio of that ground coffee to your brewed espresso. And you can't really tell how much brewed espresso you have without the scale, because as we talk about in some of our videos, the crema is going to vary on different shots based on the coffee, so that volume in the cup doesn't necessarily correspond directly to the grams of espresso that you've brewed. So having a scale is going to be just a huge boon to you when it comes to making shots that are consistent and that taste good. So this grinder obviously non-negotiable if you're in the prosumer category like this machine is. You will not be able to achieve the real quality of shots that you can pull on any prosumer unless you're grinding fresh. And the S-Automatic is what we would call a stepless grinder which is my recommendation with a few caveats for prosumer espresso grinding and what that simply means is that there's an infinite amount of adjustment so there's no fixed steps basically that you get stuck on when you're making your changes and that's how you really can dial in very precisely. We've got a frothing pitcher here. This is 12 ounces. You do have just a nice shaped spout for pouring and 12 ounces is a good size for any single drinks that might go say let's you know 
give a range of like six ounces to eight ounces uh, with that milk added. But these accessories are all really going to make it possible for us to start recreating barista quality drinks at home. The last accessory that I've got on this side, because I'll talk about my knock box, which is over there in a bit, is a tamping station. And the idea for this is if you don't want these spouts to come directly in contact with your countertop, you can simply put that right in there. And then it's not really hands-free, so you'd want to hold this still. And then that just gives you a nice area to tamp your shot. But those are just some accessories that I would recommend that you strongly consider for the Mechanica 5 Slim. So before I pull my shot, one last little uh, recommendation that I'm going to make to you is get yourself some cups that are actually espresso cups, cappuccino cups. If this is your first time buying a machine, you'll find that probably what you have laying around in the cupboard is not necessarily going to cut it. Having shorter cups is really important so that you could fit a scale under your portafilter. Having a nice espresso uh, cup would really help too with just preserving the temperature of your drinks. Having a cappuccino or a latte size cup is going to be very important for actually successfully pouring latte art. Really, it just comes down to getting the appropriate cups for the kinds of drinks that you're going to be making. But I would recommend that you don't just go with whatever you have. You should probably invest in a couple of cups right up front. So what we'll do to start is grind our coffee. And now to show you how the leveler distributor combo works, we'll get that in there. And so these blades can be set to varying depths just based on how much uh, coffee we're using. And so the dose will vary based on the size of the basket. The ECM Mechanica 5 Slim comes with a single and double shot basket that can hold about nine for the single and 18 grams for the double. So we'll go in, give that a nice press as well. And we'll lock in here. And our goal is going to be to get about 36 grams of brewed espresso out in about 25 to 30 seconds. I'm in auto tear mode on my scale, and that's gonna start counting for me as well. And honestly, that is just about perfect. So if this were, say, too fast, meaning that the shot extracted more liquid than we needed in the time frame, then we would want to adjust the grinder to be a bit more fine to restrict that flow even more. If it was too uh, slow, say, for example, and we got too little coffee in the amount of time, we would want to coarsen up that grind. So Mark has actually done a video on dialing in, which is the process of refining your grind for your espresso extractions that we can link for you up in the right hand corner. But that shot's looking pretty good to me, almost like maybe a, uh, like a nice nitro stout, for instance. Now glass cups are really good for the visual flair. So if you like entertaining, that's something I'd recommend. Uh, ceramic will do a little bit better just in terms of heat retention. Now that we've pulled our shot, I want to show off how we can use our hot water wand. So being a heat exchanger espresso machine, the Mechanica 5 Slim always has a supply of hot water that you can dispense as long as you have pressure in the steam boiler. So that same pressure that's used to froth milk is also used to push water out of this arm. So because it's a heat exchanger, you do need to make sure that you are up to steam pressure before you dispense this water. It's not like other models say that have a dedicated pump to pump that water, but you can use this for an Americano, which I'll show you how you can make right now. We'll simply pour our shot into our glass and make our Americano. So you can also use this, say, for tea or hot cocoa. Um, once upon a time, I may have used it to make ramen with, uh, you know, just some instant ramen, but I am a huge fan of hot water arms, and honestly, the huge boiler inside this machine can really pump out a lot of hot water. So if that's something important to you, this machine can definitely deliver. 
Here on the other side of the machine, I can go ahead and demo the knockbox. So this is the last accessory that I would really recommend that you consider. The knockbox is a quality of life tool that basically is used to knock out your spent pucks of coffee. So the solenoid valve inside the group drains water down into the drip tray, leaving you with a nice puck that gets fairly dry and cohesive, especially because it's just so hot in there. And the idea is that when you're done brewing and you need to get rid of this coffee, rather than knocking it out against the trash or into the sink or somewhere, you have this box and there's a metal dowel with a little rubber coating on it. And we simply strike the portafilter against that and we can knock the coffee out. And so here's one bit of advice, but you kind of want to do that relatively quickly after you've finished brewing because as the coffee does dry, if you leave it on for a little too long, you can get a little bit more stuck in there. But the knock box is great because it keeps you from having to make trips to the garbage. And then basically you can just toss all of this out once you're done brewing. So definitely recommend getting a knock box. Then once you've knocked out your puck, simply go ahead. We'll go to the group here. You can run a little bit of water out just to rinse any of this coffee out of here. If you have a towel handy, you can use that as well. And then just looking underneath to see if there's any grounds that have really stuck to there. If there are, you can use your brush that was included, give that a scrub, and you're ready to pull another shot. Now that we've brewed our espresso and our Americano, let's take a look at how we can make a cappuccino or latte using the Mechanica 5 Slim. So, being a heat exchanger espresso machine, that means that we can both steam and brew at the same time. So if you've got a lot of guests, this machine can really help you keep up with demand for those milk drinks. So first though, before you ever steam with the machine, you'll simply want to go ahead and open the valve to purge any condensation out of that wand. For our pitcher, I have a 12 ounce pitcher here with a shaped spout to help with pouring latte art. Something like this is the right size for a smaller drink like six to eight ounces because you're going to want to allow the milk to roll inside the pitcher and it can be difficult to do that, especially getting a good position with your wand if you have a much larger vessel that you're frothing into. So that's again why I would recommend just getting a frothing pitcher instead of something like say using a measuring cup or just whatever you have at home. Having the right tools does make a difference. And so with my milk in there, it's typically I want about a fingernail's width of space between the surface of the milk and then the internal spout uh, kind of crease there so that you can just see how much uh, space you've got left over. And with our pitcher, we'll really want to get this angled in such a way that we're injecting air into the milk and it's creating a vortex that will fold over on itself and get us that nice creamy texture. And when we're frothing right, you'll hear kind of a tss, tss noise, which is the air being injected into the milk. And if your steam wand is too close, say to the sides of the pitcher, you'll hear a loud kind of jet engine squealing sound. So if you hear that, you're definitely too close to the edge. So let's go ahead and prep our shot off screen and I'll be back to brew and steam on the machine. All right, I've gone ahead and prepped my shot off screen. So what I'll do first is just give a quick purge to our steam wand there and get the tip in position in the milk. So I'll lift this lever and then actually this scale is going to start counting with a timer and also letting me know what the uh, gram output is. And as that's happening, I'll be frothing, listening for that tss tss kind of tearing sound to let me know I'm adding air into the milk. And then once it's hot enough, we'll cut that and I'll go ahead and pour my drink. So. Let's get started. So we've got that tearing and you want to look to for getting a nice angle in there to get that roll so that you're getting the foam basically folding in on itself. And as the milk just starts to get a little too hot to hold, you know that you're around that 140 mark. So. I'll cut my shot and it's definitely a little too fast, so we could dial that in the next shot that we do, but what I'll do is I'll go ahead now and just get my milk, get any larger bubbles knocked out, and then slide this out. So AJ has done a great video on his uh, kind of process of learning how to froth milk and pour latte art that we'll link up in the corner for you. But for now, the basic idea is that we're gonna pour a layer of milk under our crema that we'll lift it up and then pour some foam onto the top that will make our design. So we'll go in. And 
And a little bit of splashing on the edge there, but you can see a pretty basic rosetta. It's going to come down to just getting that practice, that timing, getting a feel for the amount of air that you're injecting. But that's sort of the basics of the latte art side of things. But also, that's how you would use your Mechanica 5 Slim, say, if you wanted to brew and steam at the same time. The last thing that I want to cover is how we can use the flow control knob to affect the flow rate of water for our shots. Now, if you have the standard machine, you can tune out now, but if you've got the flow control device, there's a couple of things that you can do that will affect your extractions. This entire video so far, I have kept the flow rate knob in the position for the stock flow rate for this machine, which is going to be about seven grams per second on a vibration pump. Now, we can actually change that by changing the position of this knob. So if we were to start it at zero, basically, this is fully closed. And you can kind of think of this as a uh, clock face, maybe, and we'll turn it counterclockwise to open that valve up. But all the way closed is a zero gram per second flow. And as you can see, there's nothing coming out of the group. One quarter turn open is about 2.2 grams per second. One half will get us to about 4.2. When we go to three quarters, that's about 5.5. One full revolution is about 6.2 grams per second. And then when we get to one and a quarter, that's where we get to that basically seven gram per second flow rate. But we can keep opening. And if we go a little bit further, we can get to about 7.5, eight grams, and then all the way up to 10 grams per second if we have the valve all the way open. In most cases, you'll probably want to leave the actual extraction flow rate for yourself at about that seven gram per second. And then the things that you can do that really would benefit you, say for instance, would be to use a low flow rate around that two grams per second to gently pre-infuse your coffee, which is something that was previously not possible on vibration pump machines like this one, but that pre-infusion helps to pre-wet the puck prior to full extraction flow rate. So if you have a really bright, acidic, juicy coffee, that can help kind of mitigate some of those juicier flavors to really help cut down on the acidity. And I'm not gonna go too far into the weeds on flow control here because Mark has actually done a video that talks about some different flow control profiles that you can use that would benefit your shots depending on the kind of coffee that you're going to be brewing. One thing I will do though is I'll actually just start the pump here and show you. So this is all the way open. We've got quite a flow and our water has converged there. And as we slow it back down, you can see that flow rate is really kind of going to a trickle. And that's kind of, in my opinion, the uh, biggest advantage is again, that slow flow rate that you can use for pre-infusion because it makes a big difference. It can be similar, say, to machines maybe like the paddle group on the GS3 or like a Slayer espresso machine where you can get that really low flow rate and you can sort of emulate that on your machine at home. But one other thing that you can do too if you wanted to calculate the flow rate on your own is if you do have a scale and a timer or a scale with a timer like this one, all you'd wanna do is tear out the weight of that and start your timer and then basically, oh, I didn't start mine, it's, uh, there we go, didn't push it quite hard enough. But uh, basically, you can then take the output of water and divide it by the total seconds that the pump has run for to give you your flow rate in seconds. And that's how you'd use flow control and how you can affect the flow during extraction.